seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. You'll never have the sacred stone. <laughs> oh, this you crazy mother. Welcome to Innovating a Game Changer podcast. I am your innovator. This is Nevada Smith. And today we're going to look at Scaled Agile Framework, the PDCA cycle, along with the cone of uncertainty, and take a look at a couple of the principles. Uh, the base milestones on objective evaluation of working systems, which is principle five, and also build incrementally with fast integrated learning cycles. I'm your innovator and you're listening to Innovating a Game Changer podcast. Welcome back. This is uh, Innovating a Game Changer uh, podcast and I'm your innovator. This is Nevada Smith and today we're going to get straight into taking a look at the PDCA cycle and how that goes with principle four and five of the Scaled Agile Framework. All of this information can be found at scaledagileframework.com. It's an open body, body of knowledge that will allow you to take your IT organizations to the next level. I use a lot of these principles in all of my innovation workshops and also my innovation so sessions with any of the organizations that I work with. So let's get straight into it. What is a PDCA cycle? Well, really, it's the plan, do, check, and adjust cycle. And it's about getting back to that adjustment as fast as possible. And how do you deal with that? And how do you do that in a, in a work si situation, in a setting? What you do is you, you put it in front of people at the system demo. So during the system demo, this will be an integrated system that will allow you to stop what we do in a waterfall, which is end up with a complete and utter failure at the end. And the reason for that is because if you take a look at the standard uh, waterfall development cycle, you've got requirements complete, design was based on these uh, written requirements, uh, then the development was completed based on the designed requirements, which were uh, based on the requirements themselves. Uh, you de then do testing and you push it out to the market. And this, I believe, is why a lot of startups actually fail because they, they have an idea about a product. They build that product out. They invest hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars in that product only to go out to the market and it doesn't meet the customer's need. So this is where the, uh, the cone of uncertainty starts to creep in. And you take a look at the cone of uncertainty and it talks about this is this line where you're going to market with no customer value or worse still, you've got a product that didn't integrate properly and has lots and lots of bugs in it and the bugs get worse because the developers continue to patch those things. And so getting this PDCA cycle involved every two weeks and getting that, that system demo in place so that you can come back and get the, the feedback from both the customers and the subject matter experts so you can adjust on the next cycle. And we should be doing that every couple of weeks. So if we take a look at this, if we stay on this track in the cone of uncertainty, there's, there's a lot of unknowns out here. And the reason we end up in this situation every single time with a waterfall approach is generally based on the contracts that we have to sign to get a particular product out to market in the first place. So typically, if you're dealing with an IT organization, they want the requirements complete because they want a fixed thing that they can build against and push out to the market. They sign off on a set of requirements that are going to be included in it. Well, those requirements are up for interpretation and it's not really documented how they thought it was going to be, even though to them in the documentation it read correctly, uh, there's too much assumption going on. And then that's where we end up in this situation where pushing it out to the market with either no customer value or not. So how do we fix that problem? At the minimum, every 10 weeks at this program increment meeting, you actually do a full system integrated testing cycle and demo. And how do you do that? It is a full end-to-end -end cycle for all of the development that was going on, on uh, during that period of time. Now, I like to get a bit more aggressive with the uh, de system demos themselves. I'm demoing every two weeks. I'm getting that customer feedback every, every two weeks to make sure that we can adjust as fast as possible. Again, getting through this cycle every two weeks allows you to get back into the cone of uncertainty um, and bring that particular product uh, back online. So if we're doing this every 10-week in increments, 
of course, from an enterprise perspective, we're going to end up with a much better optimal solution than we would have otherwise uh, if we just went through the waterfall approach. Uh, but again, if you can get those increments in between every two weeks, obviously you're going to be able to adjust much quicker and bring those new feature sets in or those misunderstandings back into the system as fast as possible, which is going to put you on the right track to make sure that you deliver a product that needs to uh, meet the customer needs themselves. So if we take a look at one of these things in action here, uh, we can make decision at each one of these milestone points to determine whether or not we actually need these feature sets. And this is where a design sprint would come in very, very handy. The Google Ventures design sprint is built out to get that customer feedback from the market to make sure that they put in the product only what the customer is actually after. And so for this particular thing, uh, we're looking at do, do our users need cloud capabilities? Well, we can make an assumption that they do. And if we do, we could go through a design sprint, uh, push that through, and then get that prototype out to the customer to get that information back from the customer. So uh, if they say, yes, they do, then we can come up with the minimum viable product out of that design sprint and feed that back into our next sprint and start to build on that. What we might find out, though, is social networking, while we thought it was an important thing to go to market with, it may not be necessary. So the customer feedback loop at this point has told us, no, we don't need these framework capabilities so we can move on to something that's higher priority, right? So a work group subscription model is something that is much more important here, and that allows us to be able to uh, bring that particular feature set in. So again, if you go back to the plan to check, uh, adjust cycle, you're going to get that customer feedback at the system demo level and you're going to be able to drive that back into your next two week cycle. So if we take a look at the problem with uh, making uh, changes late in the cycle, uh, you can see here as time goes on, the cost of change for software, firmware and hardware gets harder and harder and harder or more expensive and more expensive as you go along. So it's really important to take that exploratory early iterations and understand what it is that you're trying to build. And from there, you can get that feedback back into the system again to uh, make sure you can adjust and make those changes. If you, can, if you can adjust to where your hardware needs to be earlier on, obviously the cost is cheaper. So the principles here are faster learning through faster cycles. Uh, these are these are integrated cycles here. You want to make sure that in this particular case, you're trying to make sure that everybody's on the same two-week cycle and every two weeks you're doing a full integration test. Again, uh, going through this uh, PDCA cycle over and over again, adjusting over and over again, and then that's what's going to bring you back into uh, the cone of uncertainty towards the optimal solution. And it's built on two principles throughout um, the Scaled Agile framework. This principle number four is build incrementally with fast integrated learning cycle. I think this one is the most important change that you can make in a development organization. And um, go out there and read this, understand this, and start to make these changes within your organization because these, these feedback loops are going to make sure that what the product that you're putting out actually has customer value in it. The second principle that we're looking at here is basing milestones on optive, uh, um, uh, basing milestones on objective evaluation of working systems. So we talked about how to do that just before, which is getting that demo in and making sure that everybody, all these development teams that have to work together to get to the demo actually ha are working on the same code line wherever possible. It's actually fully integrated and we're able to test things and put uh, do a demo end to end. So that's been a little bit about the Scaled Agile framework, most importantly, the PDCA cycle and the cone of uncertainty. I hope you've enjoyed this. I'm your innovator. This is Nevada Smith, and you've been listening to Innovating a Game Changer podcast.